how worship is to be conducted in a context of a gathering of believers on Sunday or elsewhere has been the subject of much debate and controversy. Simply put, the question is, to what extent do we seek to apply and live out the Bible? This debate has usually caused believers to adopt one of two opinions. Normative, corporate worship services must include all the elements that scripture commands and may include others so long as they are not prohibited by scripture. Or regulative, corporate church worship services must include all the elements that scripture commands or are a good and necessary implication of a biblical text and nothing more, nothing less. Expressions of the normative principle would probably be seen in contemporary evangelical churches that on any given Sunday would feature contemporary Christian music, use of multimedia, and congregants wearing smart casual fashion. Expressions of the regulative principle can be found in the more conservative, uh, traditional churches, a term I use loosely, such as Presbyterians, Anglicans, and other confessional churches. These churches will often be liturgical in nature and have a very ordered nature of structure of worship. Now, whether these churches, as they exist today, generally do adhere to the regulative principle is debatable. Some strengths of the normative principle, first of all, it sees the Bible as principles and then gives flexibility for method. Advocates of the normative principle will assert that the Bible tends to be filled with principles, not methods, because it has to speak to people across thousands of years, all kinds of cultures, languages, races, experiences. The Bible says, sing to the Lord. That's the principle, but which song? Which instruments? How many vocalists? That's a question of method. Secondly, it allows for cultural contextualization. The way the church conducts music around the world, cross-denominationally, is vastly diverse. You may have an Anglican church in England, practicing higher liturgy with a choir and pipe organ. Yet in Africa, you might have an Anglican church that holds to the same confessional standards, yet does their worship with drums and dancing. Same Jesus, same Bible, same beliefs, doing the same things in their own cultural way. Some weaknesses of the normative principle are, firstly, it can lead to cultural syncretism. If we do not draw the line between worship that pleases God versus worship that blasphemes Him, we will eventually draw things into the church from outside sources that will lead to deception. When one stays the history of the nation of Israel, pretty much every time it goes astray by forsaking the law, worshipping other gods, etc., it mostly occurs in response to over-friendly contact with other nations. Secondly, it can elevate unbiblical elements to the degree that they push out the biblical elements. The Bible says to have preaching and communion. Some churches don't have much of either because they have other things that they've added, like drama, art, multimedia. Not that these things are evil in of itself, but when they encroach upon what we are to actually be focusing on in our corporate gatherings as scripture commands, somewhere along the line we have to stop and say, that's enough. Thirdly, it facilitates a consumer mindset. It can make our enjoyment and not God's pleasure the object of good worship, as it were. But it's not about your glory, it's about His pleasure. It's not about what you like or I like, it's about what glorifies God. So you may ask, I don't like the band, but did glorify God? You may say, I don't know if I dug into the sermon. Well, what did God have to say? On the other side of the coin, some strengths of the regulative principle include, first of all, it lets God define the terms of how we are to worship. The Christian comes before God on his terms, not vice versa. It's basically the first and second commandments set to tune. Secondly, it affirms a high view of Scripture. The regulative principle forces believers to not go beyond what is written, 
then you will not be puffed up in being a follower of one of us over against the other. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6. Churches that uphold the regular principle very rarely drift into liberalism as the Bible is upheld as the basis of worship as well as teaching and doctrine. Number three, external influences are kept at bay. Syncretism, paganism, other religions, compromise, worldliness, such things do not enter the church because the line has been drawn, first of all, in how the church conducts worship. But at the same time, the regulative principle does have its own weaknesses. First of all, it's logically fallacious when taken to the extreme. To suggest that because something is absent from scripture, it therefore must be excluded, is to commit the fallacy of an argument from silence. Secondly, it over-spiritualizes corporate gatherings at the expense of personal devotion. Thirdly, it can lead to hyper-fundamentalism. While the church service is to be for the teaching, edification and gathering of believers, it is inevitable that if a church is faithful in evangelism, there will be non-believers present. If, on the other hand, there is no flexibility with regards to that, what the church does as the norm could easily be a stumbling block rather than a stepping stone for people coming to Christ. So which one is it? Normative or regulative? Regarding worship, the Bible is clear that God is to be worshipped in ways that He deems acceptable. This explains why God judges those who seek to worship Him with either sinful forms externally, for example Leviticus 10, and sinful hearts internally, for example Jeremiah 7. There are certain elements that the Bible does prescribe for gathered worship services at the church. Number one, expository preaching, 2 Timothy 4. Number two, communion, 1 Corinthians 11. Number three, prayer, 1 Timothy 2. Number four, the reading of scripture, 1 Timothy 4. Fifthly, financial offering, 2 Corinthians 8. Sixthly, singing and music, Colossians 3. The problem is that there is no clear prescription of an entire worship service in the Bible itself. Adherence to a set of order of worship, then, is nothing more than a man-made invention based upon the interpretation of Scripture, though not necessarily the black-and-white instruction of it. And that's how it should be treated.